Greetings, welcome to Marquee TV. Today is Tuesday, January 19th, 2010. And I have one of my favorite wineries and one of my favorite people sitting next to me, Mike Hendry from Hendry Winery in uh, Napa Valley. I uh, had the chance to discover this uh, winery, uh, I guess about 15 years ago, and uh, through those Infidels, and then since then it's uh, expanded. So Mike, do you want to tell a little bit where you're located in Napa and the style of wines you make? Yes. Um, our vineyard is in the, the foothills of, of the southwestern part of Napa, uh, and I think that's at a transition point between what are predominantly Pinot Noir and Chardonnay areas and, and Cabernet areas to the north of us. So we make a range of grapes uh, and a range of wines, and I think stylistically uh, our location in the valley uh, makes our, our Chardonnays and our Pinots probably a little distinctly warmer climate styles okay. than you might expect from Carneros, and our uh, Cabernet is, is again a little different than, than what you might expect from Oakville. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, what I liked about the wines is the, is the clarity and the, and the freshness of the wines, uh, especially the Zinfandels when I first tasted them. It was a time when everybody was making these 15, 16, 17 percent Zinfandels, these, these, these uh, overblown, what do you want to call them, corn stars, Zinfandels. And I tasted these, and, and these had purity of fruit and, and, uh, and uh, great thoughtfulness. So uh, it was actually Mary Danielik, who uh, Oakville Grocery, who told, who told me about these wines. So let's go ahead and, uh, and taste. We've got, we're tasting the 2004, sorry, uh, Block 28 Zins. What I'm first going to do is get a little rinse on the glass. I pulled it out of the the, uh, the box, and this just takes the smell out of the uh, out of the glass because it does affect the wine. Now, Mike, you you've got your vineyards divided up into different blocks. Uh, how, how big is the how big is the how big is the vineyard? How many blocks do you have? Uh, in total, the vineyard is 117 acres, and we have that divided into essentially 50 smaller blocks that we farm separately. So sometimes they're, they're soil distinctions or, or vine vigor distinctions, uh, and sometimes they separate clones or varietals on similar soils. Okay, but great. Let's go. T let's just taste this. So this is a 2004. It's currently in the market. Uh, it's got that. Just that great nap of fruit and the great Zinfandel character without it being overblown. It's just, it's incredibly, well, it's I think incredibly fresh. I love this. This is great wine. Block 28 is a, a Zinfandel that um, is sometimes a little more restrained in its fruit. It's a wine that we think of as, as both in style and structure being uh, sort of Cabernet-like yep. uh, relative to, to some other Zinfandels. It's funny, you know, I had this wine yesterday, mm -hmm. we tasted it yesterday, and I tasted it, and I, I, I don't know what was going on with me or with the wine, it didn't taste great. Mm -hmm. And I came down, I just had worked out, had lunch, and I had salad with balsamic vinegar, garbanzo beans, and beetroots. I can tell you guys, eh, don't do it if you're going to taste wine, because it completely stripped the wine out of any flavor. Not, not a good, not a good Zinfandel pairing. No, good Zinfandel pairing. <laughs> <laughs> not, at, not in the least. Um, today the wine is showing the what I expect out of Block Twenty Eight: flavor, density, richness, great drinkability, and it's got that sort of because you're so you're the close proximity to the to the to the Carneros uh, mm -hmm. Carneros Bay, um, and the, there's this almost uh, uh, seaside salt. To okay. the wine, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the wines are the wines are the wines that we make are dry essentially, and that's not uh, either in Zinfandel or or Cabernet or even Chardonnay these days. That's uh, maybe not so typical. So I think that, and our hope is is with the drier styles of Zinfandel that uh, they're they're a little more restrained and a little more food friendly. I've had these going back to '93. Remember where we were? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Now we're going to go to. One huge strength in within the Henry Ranch is their Cabernet and uh, the Cabernet-based wines. Now, just a little bit of uh, information. Henry used to, before he started making uh, wine, he used to sell his grapes to Mondavi for the Reserve and Opus One. 
and then sl over the years slowly pulled back the grapes and started making his own wine. So he does make a Cabernet. This is actually, I kind of like this a little bit better uh, because I like something different. This is uh, the Henry Red Table wine and you have the uh, blend memorized. But it's yeah. uh, Petit Verdot. This one, it happens to be 30% Petit Verdot, uh, 26 Malbec, 16 Cabernet Sauvignon, 14 Cab Franc, uh, and 14 Merlot. And that's certainly a very different style of, of Bordeaux varietal blend. There are certainly a lot of them from Napa, and, and that usually means mostly Cabernet with some Merlot. Um, th this is a very different animal. Uh, and I think stylistically, it, it's also... I, I like this wine a lot. I, I like this vintage of this wine a lot. Uh, stylistically, I think it falls somewhere between something like a Zinfandel and something like a Cabernet. Okay. It has some of that dark fruit and, and richness that a Zinfandel does, but some of the, the structure and, and complexity of a Cabernet. Well, the and Petit Verdot and, and uh, really re just gives it a distinctness that in Napa, it's, traditionally it's hard to find. You're seeing more people going back to their sort of their roots, I'm from Rutherford, I'm from Oak Knoll, I'm from here, I'm from there, but there was a point in time when it was just this one monolithic style. And what I like about this is the blend, it's unique and it's different. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's taste it. And it's good. <laughs> mm. Up front, up front fruit, nice background of acidity to it. Yeah, it's got some tannins, yeah. some good grip. This is a good, great, great bottle of wine. I really like it. Uh, the Zin sells for, I think, well, fifty-three dollars, and the Red Table wine, around the same price. Um, they're both in the store, and the wines will be open today, January nineteenth, for, for anyone to come in and taste. So thanks for listening. Cheers. Cheers. But I have a question. Go ahead. Also, go ahead. Uh, I grew up in Edmonton, actually, and yeah. I was wondering for uh, a kid from Edmonton, maybe you could what come up with a, a different chair. The Habs chair? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 24 Stanley Cups later, I've been watching it since I was a little guy, <laughs> since the early 70s, <laughs> Bellevue's last year. Canucks were brand new. I love the Canucks, don't get me wrong, but Habs. Still a Montreal guy. Signed by Patrick Walk, too. Ah, yeah. But, you know, Canucks do way better traditionally than the Habs have for the last 10 years. But, you know yeah. what? That's a sign of a hockey fan. How to Good or bad? Well, always with both the teams. Yeah. Anyway, but Edmonton is still without a win in 2010, so there we go. I think they're one in 13. Yeah, they're not doing very well. I feel bad. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>